Hi Astro Addicts, my name is Tim and welcome back to Astro Addict and welcome back to Pixinside. In this video I want to go over manual image stacking, calibration, registering, all of that. There is of course a script to do that for you. Just load your images in, hit play and it does everything. But I think in my opinion it's good to do all of this manual at least once or twice. To get a general understanding of what each process does, how it works and where possible errors can come from. So maybe do this once or twice and if you got a good feeling for it, you can go for the script. The first process you should always do is to blink your images to see if there are maybe trailed stars or satellites in there. In my case, my images are already blinked, so I don't need this process. You can go through them really quick. The next thing you should do is to go for the subframe selector. So this is always under process and in the back here. And I don't use it to weigh my images, I only use it to find my reference image for aligning and stacking. So in this case, I'm here on measure subframes. Let me move this over here. Measure, I will add my files. I have here the stacking tutorial. Load my light frames. And these settings here do not matter, they always use the correct values if it's in pixels and data numbers, just make sure to set your correct camera resolution. In my case, 16 bits. I don't need a directory, I'm only measuring them. And hit go. So I'm trying to find the best image with the best signal to noise ratio, to have a base for stacking. The measurements are here. And I will switch to signal to noise ratio. We see in this case, the best signal-to-noise ratio is in the last image, so remember that. If I want to test for focusing, I would switch to full width half maximum, and maybe even ditch this image here. The higher the number, the full width half maximum, the worse the focusing is. So maybe ditch one or two images here, if you have enough data to compensate with. We know our reference image. On the side here I listed some process icons and you see the ones with the same symbol, that's the same process, I just named them differently to have some order in here. BIOS integration is the first one, the image integration process. I will add my files, BIOS frames. We will create a master BIOS frame. Combination average, always. Normalization additive with scaling is fine for most images. In case of flat frames, you could also go for multiplicative. The weights, since there's no signal here, don't care. We want to generate the image. Go to rejection 1. And as always, I go for linear fit clipping. Depending on the number of images you have, work your way down. The more images you have, the better rejection filter you can use. I like linear fit a lot. I have no experiences with these two down here. I don't need my rejection maps. If you generate them, you can take a look at how this process works. You don't need to worry about the other tabs, and I typically don't evaluate noise and signal. That's just taking too much time for numbers I'm not even looking at. Hit go, and our master bias frame will be created. And this should be done fairly quick. Our master bias frame is here. Let's take a look at that. It looks like a master bias. Great. I will now save this image. And for you to see, I call it a master bias. And the file format is XISF, the Pixinside internal format, which is like the best one to save images. Hit OK. And we can continue. I will put this away for safekeeping. And also call it master bias in here. Now, since we have our master bias created, I will calibrate the dark frames with this master bias frame. The image calibration tab, and we go for our dark frames. The output directory, I will now create a new one. 
process images and I will dump all of my images which are created in this entire process in here. I don't need any evaluations. I will put only a master bias frame in here. This one. And hit go. Our images are calibrated and now we will integrate the dark frames. Process images, dark frames. Choose all. No evaluation. And same as with the bias frames. Don't care about the weights. And linear fit. No rejection maps. Go. The master dark is created. Let's take a look. And it looks just like a master dark is supposed to look. That's great. Save it. Again, as an XISF file. Master. Master dark. And put it away. For safekeeping. Now, since we have these two master images created, let's calibrate our flat frames. You can see that this entire process manually can be quite a hustle. But again, do it once or twice to get a feeling for it. Now I have some more of them because my camera tends to screw them up from time to time. No evaluation. I will use a master bias frame and a master dark frame, which I know is controversial because this dark is way longer than the flats. So there may be some dark noise left in our final integration. But since I don't have a dark flat frame, it's no use right now, so I'd optimize to get the best possible result out of this process. No master flat. And go. The images are calibrated. And let's integrate our flat frames. Seems like I forgot to put an output directory, so let's do it like this. Our calibrated flat frames over here. Integration average. This time you can also go for multiplicative, since flats are used for division. The weights don't care. The rejection again can be linear fit clipping. And now in normalization you go for equalize fluxes. No rejection maps. No evaluation. Let's go. The master flat is here. It doesn't look like much, especially it doesn't look colorful, because it's not debayered yet. But our lights are not anyway, so master flat. My F key doesn't work sometimes. Put it over here and save it. Master flat. Alright, the next step is to calibrate our light frames. We are finally at this step. Choose lights, all of them. No evaluation. I will choose a bias frame, the master bias, this one, the master dark, this one, and the master flat, this one. Calibrating our light frames, let's go. The next step is optional. I have cosmetic correction here. If you find lots of hot and cold pixels even after calibration, you can use this process. I will add the light frames I just calibrated, and I believe they are in here, yes. Choose those. This time actually put an output directory in process images. We have three ways to go about this process. I typically use auto detect. I will open one, stretch it. I go for the real time preview, and in there choose another preview. And activate hot and cold sigma. If you now move these sliders, more or less pixels which are out of range will be rejected. So see the numbers down here. Move the slider. And you can see how many pixels will be replaced by mean values. You can of course do this to your liking, but I would recommend not to ditch more than 3000 pixels per image. And also remember that this number is calculated for your preview, so maybe ditch the preview to go out for the entire image again. So 10,000, too much. 2.3 maybe. 2.2? 2 .2? Yes. 
And that's not the same as with the coals, so maybe 2.2, 1, 2, maybe 1.9. And that's too much, so let's stay at 2. And now we can start this process and have our images cosmetically corrected. This process can actually harm your image quite a lot, so make sure in the real time preview that you are not ditching too many pixels. Now we go about debearing our light frames. This process must be used if you have a dedicated astronomy camera. You probably don't need it if you have a DSLR. Most DSLRs save in RAW format, which is already colored, but dedicated astronomy cameras need to be debayered. So in this case, the mosaic pattern, 99.9% .9 of cameras are RGGB. The method VNG is fine. Add our recently processed images, light over here. We have CC in the back for cosmetic correction. Choose all of those. Output directory, this one. No evaluation, thank you. And debayer. The next step is registering. Registering is just a fancy term for aligning the images to be stacked. We have the star alignment process. And let's remember we need to select a reference image. And it was the one with the best signal to noise ratio, the last one in our list. So I will choose that. So maybe go for this one, debayered, and the last one of those. I will add my files just now. Set an output directory. And this time, let's make a new image. Lights registered. You can, of course, create a new folder for each of these file types. Just gonna make it more robust and sorted. We will register and match our images. I don't want to drizzle this image right now. The other settings are fine, you don't need to worry about any of those. And hit go. The images are aligned. And let's finally integrate our light frames. The image integration tab. I will add the most recent lights. Integration, average, additive, the weights, now, signal to noise ratio estimate. So the images with the best signal to noise ratio will be considered more in stacking. You can of course go for your own keyword, which you set in the subframe selector. But I don't tend to do that, as an error works fine. Rejection 1, same settings, linear fit, no maps, no evaluation. Let's create our final integration frame, finally. And let's take a look at this. That's kind of what I expected. Since I used the Optolong L Extreme filter, the green channel is just overboard. So let me fix that real quick to show you that this manual stacking process actually worked well. Extract channels. Fit the other channels to green, so fit blue to green, and fit red to green, and recombine them. This button. Here we are. Put this away. I don't need my channels anymore. Rotate it, I know that's going to be the wrong rotation. Here we are. Now in the next steps you would have to crop this, remove vignetting, maybe remove light pollution. There's a tiny bit of dark noise left here. I think my dark frames are just a little too, too short or the temperature wasn't right. Both possible. But all in all, we have some good detail in here. The nebula is there. Manual stacking worked. So if you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And if you have maybe some tips on what I could do better, I will pin them to the top. As for me, my name is Tim, I'm an astro addict, I wish you clear skies, 
and may the night be with us.